One does not realize the complexity of having choices till one has it, right? And I think that was the biggest thing that I realized that it's much harder to take a decision when you have the choices versus you don't. I did dabble into investment. I did dabble into trying to advise companies and all of that. I realized that the joy you get of creating is something that you miss the most. And I think if you have built and created all your life, the idea of not creating is never a good idea. It was just kind of making you more frustrated. And, and if you have been living life with high intensity all the time, it's important to kind of go back to that. I remember I was working when I was in 2007 or 2008 and I realized I can keep buying a bigger house or a bigger car and I realized that there is no end to that trap or I decide to do something of my own. Uh, and the reason I felt that because anyways when I was an employee, I never behaved like one. I mean, I was a terrible employee, right? I would always do things that I want to do and build companies within the company and uh, anyways keep doing initiatives that I liked. I just realized that one needs to have enough confidence. I think a lot of entrepreneurs do face that, right? They they feel that they are different. They feel that they should be doing something on their own. But they get into the trap of uh, EMI, right? I, I call it the entrepreneurship Marneka injection. Our country is in a very desperate situation for having more entrepreneurs. If we do not have more entrepreneurs, where are the jobs coming from? Why cred? I think looked like an interesting problem to solve because uh, it looked like almost everybody in, in the country was trying to solve for the volumes of customers whereas uh, there are a handful of people who pay taxes and handful of people who are uh, doing the right things and nobody was really looking for them. And I think for us it was a biggest opportunity to say that there is a customer segment that we can really really focus on and truly relate to them and their problems. So the idea is that can we help do two things uh, for a small segment of customers who are credit worthy and trustworthy can we improve their financial life by helping them prevent bad behavior and constantly encourage good behavior it's as simple as as ancient as religion right uh, we were always told that if you do good deeds you go to heaven if you don't do good deeds you go to hell i can't construct hell technically so i can create a uh, uh, at least a positive environment, right? So I think in a country like India, which is so large, right? It is extremely hard to go around kind of punishing people, right? It's not even a practical solution. But you can definitely encourage good behavior, right? So as long as we are in that direction and dimension that we are helping financial progress of the good actors, right? I think everything is a fair game. Now the question is what will we do? We'll do a bunch of experiments. But what we imagine in a two, three years time, I think this will be a community of, uh, I would say 10, 12 million customers who are likely to be using the service and product, but also probably engaging amongst themselves and improving each other's lives as well. A lot of people uh, have simplified what data is because of the events that happened in Facebook. And I think it's unfortunate, right? Because now every company is going to be viewed with the same lens. We, we are asked that, oh, you have email access, but we, I sometimes wonder why don't people ask that the company that has your email is an ad company, right? So the question is that a lot of times we do not differentiate between the differences of that. Today, when we take data, we have a very simple intention, right? Can I help you highlight transactions that you otherwise don't get to know or miss because it's not coming on your SMS? And I think if you can just highlight that to them, saying that can we improve your score? Can we improve your repayment behavior? Can we uh, improve your interest that you are paying? You can actually have better financial life. I think our goal is quite simple. Uh, and, and we are very fortunate because Every customer who has discovered some of these features, they absolutely love us and, and uh, keep wanting to try more and more things that we offer. The, the country behaved very, very differently in post demonetization and, and we were doing this way before when Paytm started, right? So the thing is, uh, but one cannot regret all of these things. Life is all about these left and right turns that you can keep regretting I missed it, right? But you can be thankful that you were right about doing something that just behaved ahead of time. 
and and like when we did credit card and credit like a lot of people are saying why are you focusing on everybody's doing UPI but the thing is credit cards have grown from 18 million cards to 45 million cards in three years time and spends on credit card has gone from 1.8 billion dollars a month to 8.5 billion dollars is exactly the same period of time so the question is that sometimes doing contrarian things uh, hurts you if you don't time it right but sometimes if you time it right it can turn out to be quite well so I think uh, I, I have zero regrets for whatever happened but the thing is that I'm glad that at least the thesis that we were way ahead of others to pick worked out I have a simple philosophy I believe that India is such an early market competing is rarely going to create wealth but creating newer opportunities will create more wealth right so I think uh, there are so many gaps in the market that if you go for the blue ocean strategy you will actually create more wealth versus uh, compete on existing sectors and destroy wealth that exists and I think uh, I, I believe Indian entrepreneurs need to realize that wealth is not zero sum and therefore it has to be thought of it not as something like a zero sum where only when I lose you win and only when uh, uh, you lose I win it's not the situation everybody can win if the economy is going to go to 6 trillion there will be enough people who will be wealthy I'm a serial entrepreneur uh, am I a successful serial entrepreneur I think time will tell uh, uh, I think uh, I have done probably six, seven companies already. Most people just know about a few. But the thing is that India does not like serial entrepreneurs as much as it likes entrepreneurs. Uh, in India, I have noticed this that uh, we treat our companies as our kingdoms, right? And every time you exit your company, it's considered to be a weakness or a sign of weakness. Nobody uh, in India appreciates this idea of that, oh, you sold your company. We treat our companies as of our, our spouses and not as our kids, right? Like it's, it's just a very different kind of a challenge I have seen. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, uh, it's, I can tell you one thing though. It gets harder and harder and harder every time. Why so? It doesn't get easier. Why so? Because uh, you have zero room for error. Nobody expects you to fail. Everybody expects that, okay, just because you can raise money, you will always be successful. And and uh, the system is not conducive for people who are trying multiple times. They expect it to be perfect uh, all the time. Uh, and, and that puts extraordinary pressure on the team, on yourself. And I think uh, uh, the toll it takes uh, is, is a, at a different level. So uh, it, it's, it's only sexy from the outside. <laughs>